Lesson 2.3 is solving linear equations using one variable. Just wait until we get to two. Um, and I have step-by-step -step instructions up at the top on how to solve multi-step equations. These steps you probably will not use until we get to pages three and four, um, possibly two. But these are just two-step equations at first, just to remind you of how to solve those. So I know that most of you already know how to do this, but we're just going to go back through them a bit. And then you will notice that as we go further into the notes, the problems get uh, more and more complex. Okay. Um, one thing that I noticed on the test when I was grading is that some of you are still having difficulties with order of operations. Um, and so I'm going to show you something really quick about order of operation before we start doing this. Um, when you have something like 4 plus 2 times 3 minus 6 divided by 2, okay? A lot of students, when they started solving, they added 4 plus 2 first. Then they multiplied by 3. Then they subtracted 6. Then they divided by 2. Can somebody tell me what is wrong with that? Lily? Oh. Yeah, so you have to do multiplication first. Then you have to come over here and do division. Okay, so now we have four plus six uh, minus three, and then we get 10 minus three, which is seven. Now, if we didn't do it this way and we did it in order, we would end up with six times three is 18, minus six is 12 divided by two is six. So we would have got six instead of seven and that would be incorrect. Okay, so just make sure you're following order of operation. Now let's make this a little bit confusing. When you do equations, you actually do reverse order of operation. You have to do your addition and subtraction before you do multiplication. So, uh, and the further we get with that, the more you'll see that. So look at example one. What do you know from last year that you're supposed to do first? Can you write it down? Right? Yes, which is? Three. So we're going to subtract three on both sides of the equation. And you bring down what you did not work on. So I didn't do anything with 2x. And 5 minus 3 is 2. Now that we've gotten rid of our addition and uh, addition and subtraction by doing the inverse. We did the inverse of positive three and subtract three. We're going to get rid of multiplication. Uh, and so by doing the inverse of that, which is division, your goal is to isolate this X, get it all by itself. So you have to remove everything from around the X to figure out what it is. Okay. So in this case, we end up with X equals one. Now, I would like for you to do practice one by yourself, very similar to example one. And I will pause the video to give you time to work on this. And then when the video pops back up, you will see the answer. So go ahead and check your answer for practice one. Does anyone have any questions on that? Okay, let's go ahead and move down to example two. Um, on example two, your goal is to get all very coefficients of variables on one side and all constants on the other. It does not matter which side they are on. So in this case, I could either subtract five from both sides, or I could subtract eight from both sides. I could subtract three from both sides, or I could subtract nine from both sides. It does not matter where you begin. Now, I typically begin with my coefficients and variables because I like to keep them positive, but you're not going to always be able to keep them positive, okay? So, like, in our last class, somebody subtracted three from both sides first, but I subtracted five. That, it doesn't matter. You'll always end up with the same answer, okay, if you did it correctly. So, I'm going to start by subtracting 5x on both sides.
So I've moved all of my coefficients with variables to one side, and there are not any more of those. So now I'm going to work on my constants. I'm going to move my constants over. Now, sometimes some students want to subtract 9 on both sides. But if you do that, you leave your right side completely empty with a 0. And you do not want to do that. Not until later. Okay. So in this case, I need to move my 3 over by doing the inverse operation. And I end up with 3x equals 6. Now I have all coefficients and variables on one side, all constants on the other. I still need to isolate my x. Since 3 and x are being multiplied, I have to do the inverse of multiplication, and I need to divide by 3 on both sides. And x equals 2. So are there any questions on the process of this? Okay, I would like for you to do practice two on both sides and I'm gonna pause the video. Go ahead and check practice two. All right, any questions on these? Okay, so, so, on the first step, what did you do? What was the first thing you did? You subtracted five. Okay, so let's rewrite this problem. Well, let's just, I'll leave this here. Okay, so you subtracted five on both sides. And then once you subtracted five, what did you get? Okay, and then what did you do? Twelve. Okay. But notice that this 12 and this 12 are not like terms because this one doesn't have an X. So you should have subtracted eight on both sides. So subtract eight on both sides. What do you get out of that? Yeah, so you should end up with 4x equals 12. And then what are you going to do? All right, let's look at example three. The only difference between this and what we just did is we're incorporating negatives in there. Okay, so you need to be solid in working with positives and negatives. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to subtract three on both sides. And I'm doing that to keep my variable coefficient positive, but you don't really have to do that. So then I end up with negative four equals six X minus 18. Notice that this says plus a negative 18. You don't really need that plus in there. That is just fine. You can just make it X minus 18. Okay, now that I've moved my coefficients and variables to the right side, I have to move all my constants to the left. So I have to move my 18 over by doing the inverse of subtraction. And I add. Okay. Negative 4 plus 18, 14. So 14 equals 6x. Now at this point, you might be saying, if you tried this on your own, oh, I did something wrong because I'm going to end up with a fraction. But remember, algebra does not always have pretty answers. So we're doing this right. We're going to subtract both sides by six. The one thing, though, that I need you to do is reduce your fractions, simplify them. Otherwise, I take a half point off if you don't simplify your fractions. So in this case, 14, six becomes, yes? Yes. So here's the deal. And I'm glad you asked that. I want them as improper fractions. Why? Because eventually I'm going to start graphing. And I want you to get in the habit of leaving them improper. We do not graph mixed numbers. We do not graph decimals. Okay. So leave them improper. Somebody says, well, what if we do all of that extra work and we turn it into a decimal or a mixed number? Well, 
that's putting a lot more work on you, one. And two, I will take points off. Leave them as improper fractions, okay? Um, all right, I want you to do example three on your own. And then I want you to try examples, example and practice four on your own, okay? Because those are simple, just combining like terms. So I'm gonna pause the video for you to work. Okay, go ahead and check practice three. Make sure you did that correctly. Are there any questions on the break? Okay. Um, all right, now on example four, and I got a couple of questions. So I'm gonna do the example four first. Uh, you need to combine these like terms. One of the one of the steps is do can I combine like terms on either side of the equation before I start moving anything around? Okay. You always want to look at the right and then the left or vice versa and say, see, is there anything I can do? Can I distribute anything? Can I combine any like terms? And you always do that before you do inverse operations. So in this case, we have a like term. We have 1x plus 7x. So we can solve that first, and we get 16 equals 8x. Then we can start uh, adding or subtracting. In this case, the only thing that we uh, can do is divide both sides by 8. So we end up with 2 equals x. Now, practice four is very similar. So if you've already done it, check your answer. If you haven't, go ahead and work on that. So I'll solve four while some of you are still working on it. Okay, so check practice four. Um. We're going to go ahead and go to page two. And on example and practice five, two step equation, very similar to the first two we did on the first page. So go ahead. Um, I'm going to do example five. Um, my variable is already on one side of the equation, there's nothing to combine it with on the other. So I'm going to work on my constants. I'm going to subtract eight on both sides. 13 minus 8 is 5, so 5 equals 3x. Then I divide both sides by 3, okay? And I get 5 thirds equals x, and you will leave it as an improper fraction. So go ahead and work on practice 5. Here's practice five. Looks like most of you finished up. So we're gonna go ahead and go down to example six. So in looking at example six, oh wait, what did I do? Oh, hold on, this is wrong up here. Oh. All right. Um, example six, you want to look at your left and your right, and you want to see if there's any like terms that you need to combine. Um, this is actually the second step. The first step would be to distribute, but we don't have anything to distribute. So we can combine our 2x and our 5x. So that's what we're going to do first. And 2x plus 5x is 7x. 
So I'm going to bring down what I did not work on. And now we're back to a two-step equation. We add three to both sides. And we end up with 7x equals 7. Divide by 7. And x equals 1. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do example six, seven, and eight, and then have you do practice six, seven, and eight. Okay. So let's go ahead and move down to example seven. Same thing as six. I'm going to combine my terms first. So I'm going to combine my nine X minus one X and I get eight X. Oh yeah. And then I'm going to add three to both sides. And this isn't anything new than what we did on the back. The only thing was that we were com we combined the like terms. So that was an additional step. Everything else I'm doing, I am going quickly, but it's because we've already practiced this. So we end up with 8x equals 16. Divide both sides by 8. And x equals 2 months. Any questions on those two yet? Make sure you've got the right answer. Okay, so on example eight, can anyone tell me what I need to do first? Go ahead. Yes, subtract 5x on both sides. Once you do that, you're just left with a one step equation. So we end up with. 2x equals negative 9. A lot of students forget to bring that down that negative. Okay. And then we divide both sides by 2. And you get x equals negative 9 halves. I can't reduce it any further. So I keep it cool. Okay. All right. So now I want you to do the practice problems if you have not done them already. I'm going to pause the video and come back with the answers. Okay, here's the answer for practice six and seven. So if you can check those, make sure you got those right. Okay, and then I'm going to show the answer to practice eight, which is negative three. Any questions on those? Okay. All right, we can move on to page three. Oops, that was the answer. No, I didn't. Oh, here? Yeah, here. Okay. So 3x minus 1x is 2x. And then I subtracted 7 from both sides and got a negative 10. Oh, I got practice 8. Oh, practice 8, I got a negative 3. Oh, I was going to Okay, that's okay. Okay, so let's go to page three. I want you to do example nine and practice nine on your own because those are just a review of what we just did. And then we're gonna go down to more problems, but we're adding a step, we're adding the distributive property, okay? So I'm gonna pause the video while you guys work on practice nine, and then I'll come back with the answers. Okay, check your example in practice nine. Any questions on this? Okay, let's go get down to the fun stuff. All right. All right. So if you look at the very first page, it does tell you simplify both sides of the equation by using the distributive property and combining like terms if needed. So you always want to do the distributive property first. What do you want to do first? Distributive property. Distributive property. Second, you want to combine like terms. So distributive on both sides, then combine like terms on both sides. Then you start moving things around. So in looking at example 10, the first thing I'm going to look for is the distributive property. Do I have the distributive property? Uh, yeah. Yes. And I have this negative. So what am I actually going to distribute on this one? Negative, negative one. A lot of students want to say the three X. You only distribute the 
number or the term that is right in front of the parentheses. And you don't see anything other than that negative right in front. So if you don't see a number, then you put a one right there. And that is what you will distribute. You're actually distributing the negative is what you're doing. But sometimes when we put a one there, it makes it make more sense. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute negative one to both the two and the X. Okay. Now let's rewrite this. Three X. Okay, now I have a negative one times two, which gives me a negative two. And then I have a negative one times X, which gives me a negative one X. Okay. All right, now I am going to, step two is we combine my terms on the left and the right. So we have to look at these and see, okay, can I combine any like terms on the left side? Yes. yes, I can combine my 3x and my negative 1x. So I'm going to do that first. So 3x minus 1x gives me a 2x. And then I just bring down everything I did not work on. Okay, I'm looking at this and I can't combine any more like terms on the left, but I can combine my like terms on the right. I can combine negative four and negative two. Now, negative, I have four negatives, I have two negatives. How many total negatives do I have? Six negatives, that's right. So I'm gonna bring down my two X minus two because I did not work on those. Negative four minus two is a negative six. We're down now to a two-step equation. At this point, we know how to solve it, or we should, because we've been working on this, okay? Um, if you're struggling still some, make sure you come to help class, and I can help you. Um, but I'm going to go through this part. I'm going to add two to both sides, trying to isolate that x, and I get rid of addition and subtraction first. And I have 2x equals negative 4. I have six negatives and two positives. The twos cancel out. I have six more negatives than I do positives. Next, I need to isolate my x by getting rid of my multiplication of two. I do the opposite and I divide by two. My answer for this one is x equals negative two. Okay, any questions? Because negative four divided by two, negative two. I'm gonna pause the video and let you do practice 10. Okay, here's the answer to practice 10. Go ahead and check the work. Make sure you did it correctly. What? <laughs> I was just about to ask, do we have any questions? I think we do. Number what? Practice 10. What did I do wrong? Okay, so look, this is how I want you to check. I want you to go line by line and make sure that your second line matches this. See? That's what my problem is. Yeah. For who, when we do the checking, yeah, I just have the like math in my head because that's just how I do it. No. So if I get no. something wrong, I, you have to like really explain it to me. But or you should start over. That I will not know you're right. But um, I just do most of the math for me. You have to show your work. I'm glad that you said that. You guys need to show you guys you need to show your work on your homework because if you don't show your work, I give you no credit. Well, I show my work. I just write down my like my head. Like what's it? Okay. The thing is, is if let me explain to you why it's to your benefit to to show your steps. Because if you get the answer wrong, I go back and if I can read your work, I could say, okay, do they get partial credit for doing part of it right? But if I can't read your work. I'm not gonna strain myself to read your work and waste my time. So I will just mark it, give you all points off. So if it's worth three points, you might get two out of the three correct. But if I can't read your work, you get zero. So, all right, we're gonna move on to example and practice 11. Okay, so I'll do the example with you. So on this example, remember, step number one, what do we have to do? was the first thing that I always drew to distribute. 
So in this case, we can distribute on both sides and we can do it at the same time. So I'm going to distribute the two to both terms on the inside of the parentheses, and I'm going to do the same thing with the five. A lot of students forget to multiply the number on the outside of the parentheses to the second term. Do not forget to do that and pay attention to your negatives. So in this case, two times three is six. Two times X is two X. Five times X is five X. And five times a negative three is a negative 15. And now we have a problem similar to what we did on one of the previous pages, okay? We're going to move all of our coefficients and variables to one side, all of our constants to the other. Now I am gonna move my two X over so I can keep my, keep it positive. Now I don't have to keep it positive. Sometimes it'll just automatically be negative and you don't have anything else to do. So I have six equals three X minus 15. So all of my coefficients with variables are on one side. Now I'm gonna move all my constants to the other. So I'm going to add 15 to both sides. And I get 21 equals three F. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by three. And I get seven equals X. That's good, that's good because you're learning. That's the goal, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you time to do a practice 11. Uh, we'll come back and see the answer. What work? Okay, go check on number 11. For this one? Any questions on 11? Someone need to wait and... Okay, go ahead and go line by line and check. And then we're gonna do practice 12 in just a second. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to number 12. Yeah, bro. After number 12, I just did it. Right, because it's new. It's like, too hard. It's not. I mean, it's easy, but it's too hard. Okay. Okay. That is not a good excuse not to do. All right, so first step, what do we do? Distribute. Distribute. We're going to distribute. This time we have two on both, on on the same side. So we're gonna distribute our three and our negative one. Okay, so let's do this. Three times X, three times two, six. negative one times X, negative one times four, and then bring down your three minus four plus five. All right, what was step two? Combine. Yeah. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. terms. So that was a common denominator. On this side, I have three x and negative one x. Two x. And I get two x. And I'm going to bring down everything that I did not work on. Gentlemen. Okay. Now I'm working still on the left side. I can combine six minus four, and I end up with two X plus two equals three minus four plus five. Now, when you come to something like this, you can kind of do this together. When I do my like terms on the right side, a lot of students want to add four and five first. You cannot add four and five first. You will not get the same, the right answer. Remember with the order of operations, you if you have addition and subtraction, you go in order from left to right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take three minus four, okay? And I end up with two X plus two equals negative one plus five. Now I'm gonna combine like terms with negative one and five. So I have 
2x plus 2 equals 4. Okay, we're not supposed to be eating in the classroom. Next, I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. And I end up with 2x equals 2. And then I, long problem, right? All that for the answer to be 1. <laughs> Do you want it to be 2,157? <laughs> Yes, okay. Okay. I want you all to do practice 12, and then we're going to move on to the back. Um, on the back, you can actually start solving them um, if you would like. But go ahead and work on practice 12, and then we'll come back and share our answer. It's due. Right. Here's practice 12. Check your answer. Yes. I've had, students, I've had students who have struggled tremendously in math. Two different types of students. One continues to come to help class, works hard, tries their very best, they will pass. Then you have somebody else who just doesn't try anymore, they give up, and then they end up failing. And I guarantee you, when you come to help class, you get a lot more out of the lessons and you're able to succeed. Yes. It's a camel. Okay. We're going to go to the back in just a minute. Okay. Going to page four. Um, we are only going to do three of these problems. Um, just so you get an example of what each one is. So example, thir okay, first of all, I want to go over the vocabulary because this will be, we will be tested on this at some point. Um, so you have three types of equations. You have equations that are uh, conditional, meaning there's going to be one exact solution to it. So, and that's what we've been doing this whole time. We've been doing conditional equations. They all have a solution to it, right? But then you have two other ones. You have one that's called an identity, where when you get to the bottom of your equation, you're going to get the left side equaling the right side. And you're going to see it as 0x equals 0 most of the time. Because... Zero times anything is going to equal zero, right? So you get down to the bottom and it's going to be zero equals zero. That is identity. It mirrors each other. And I'll show you a little trick to identity where you don't have to solve the entire problem if you can identify that it is identity. The last one is contradiction where you're solving it and the left side does not equal the right side. So it's a false statement. That's a contradiction. A contradiction is a false statement. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve example 13. At this point, you'll be able to solve it on your own. So if you want to start it and continue, I'll do this on uh, with you, though. So the first thing I need to do is distribute my negative to the x and the negative 3. So I end up with 2x minus x minus, no, plus 3 equals 3x plus 5. Now I'm going to combine my terms. 2x minus x equals x. Now I'm going to move things around. I'm going to subtract x from the left, from the right. At 3 equals 2x plus 5. Now I'm going to subtract 5. A lot of students look at this and say, oh, I can't subtract 5 because it's going to be a negative. Yes, you can. Remember, it doesn't always look pretty. You might end up with negatives and fractions and all that good stuff. Negative 2 equals 2x, and then I divide by 2. And, yep, negative 1 equals x. So, what type of equation is this? Is this conditional identity or contradiction? It's conditional because there's one exact solution. So, part of your answer is solving it, the other part is saying that it is conditional. And so in your homework, you will box both answers, okay? All right, let's look at, at example, th or practice 13. So we're gonna go ahead and solve this and you may get down to a certain point and already know what it is. So we're gonna, Distribute the 4 
on the right side. And you have 3x plus 8 equals 4x plus 8 minus x. Now I need to combine like terms. So I'm going to combine my 4x and my negative x. And I end up with 3x plus 8 equals 3x plus 8. Do you guys see what this is already? Yes, it's yeah. fact. It's yes. identity because the left side equals the right side. But let me show you something. Okay, what happens if you're solving this and you realize you're not recognizing that this is identity? You could keep going. So I'm going to keep going and show you what, if you don't recognize it immediately, what it is. But this could be your answer with identity. Okay, so we subtract the 3x on both sides. We end up with 0x plus 8 equals 8. And then we subtract 8 on both sides. And we end up with 0x equals 0. What in the world? 0 times x, 0 times anything is going to equal 0. So the left side equals the right side. So this is identity. Now, either one of these can be part of your answer with identity. They don't both have to be part. You could eliminate all of this work over here if you recognize it right away and it would not be marked wrong, okay? Any questions on that one? Okay. Now let's go to practice 14. Let's skip down to practice 14. Um, all right, I'm going to start off by subtracting 5x on both sides. Okay, and I end up with 0x minus 15 equals negative 10. What do you guys think this one is? Oh, are you sure it's not identity? Of course you skip. Oh, wait. You, you think it is what? Okay, let's keep going. Plus 15, plus 15. And we end up with 0x equals 5. What happens when we try to divide by 0? It's identity. Okay, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. What is 0? Hold on. What is zero divided by five? Zero. Zero. What is five divided by zero? Zero. No. Five. No. Five. 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 Five divided by one is five. Watch what happens. Watch what happens on the calculator. Five. Zero divided by five is zero. You were right. Five divided by zero. What does that say? Error. 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 Look at my sign up here. It says it's all fun and games until someone divides by zero. You cannot divide by zero. It is what on a graph it's considered undefined. In a problem, it, it signifies no solution to the problem. Meaning? Meaning that this is a contradiction. So... This is your answer. 0x does not equal 5 contradiction. Okay, so new lesson learned, it seems like for all of you or most of you, you can never divide by 0. Never. It's no solution, contradiction, undefined. Okay? I know. Any questions on that? So when you get to 0x equals 0, that is a true statement because anything you multiply by zero is going to give you zero. But down here on the contradiction, anything that you multiply by zero, this x, say you plugged in a two there, it's going to equal zero, not five. Even if you plugged in five where the x is, five times zero is zero, not five, making this a false statement. Does that make sense? Yeah. All of it. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, oh, oh, I just called you by your last name, didn't I? <laughs> okay, 
So that concludes lesson 2.3. We're off and you do the rest. Remember that your homework is only the practice 2.3 blue flag, not any review. Okay. <laughs>